there are a lot of different types of ETFs out there. And if you're just beginning to invest, it can seem a bit overwhelming to figure it all out. And with 8,000 plus ETFs to choose from, it may seem impossible to find just the right one. Well, in this video, I want to help simplify that by breaking down some of the types of ETFs out there and giving a little more clarity on how to find and invest in them. I'll move quickly through some portions of this. So you may want to pause for a screen that has information that you're wanting or a chart that you want to look more closely at. So let's get down to the different types of ETFs. The first is the U.S. Market Index ETFs. U.S. Market ETFs are composed of different U.S. companies of all shapes and sizes. You can find an ETF that focuses on large cap companies greater than $10 billion, mid cap companies between $2 billion and $10 billion, and small cap companies which are less than $2 billion. Three popular ETFs are Invesco's QQQ, Vanguard's VOO, and Spider's SPY. Invesco's QQQ tracks the NASDAQ 100 index which is very heavy in the technology sector, with Apple being the largest holding. QQQ as of today has averaged 17.36% per year in returns over the past 10 years. Vanguard's VOO and Spider's SPY both follow the S&P 500 index, so they'll be very similar in composition. The biggest difference between these two is the expense ratio or the cost, with Vanguard's VOO being 30 cents per $1,000 and Spider's SPY being 90 cents per $1,000. And each of these have done really well with an average return of just a little bit short of 12% per year. Our next type of fund is international ETFs. International ETFs track the index of non-US countries or group of countries. These funds can further be divided to include developed markets and emerging markets as well. Developed market countries are typically industrialized economies that have a high income per capita and have access to highly developed financial systems. Countries that are included in the developed markets category include those such as United Kingdom, Japan, and Australia. An emerging market is one that is a developing nation that is becoming more engaged with the global markets. They're beginning to show signs of becoming a developed market, but they're not quite to the point of being into that category yet. A few Examples of international ETFs are Vanguard's VXUS, Vanguard's VEU, and Schwab's International Equity ETF, SCHF. As a departure from the US-based stocks, we can see that these ETFs are focused primarily in the financial services sector. Another group of ETFs include stocks selected from a specific sector or industry. A lot of these ETFs are made up of US stocks. And one reason you may be comfortable with selecting a specific sector is if perhaps you work in one of the industries and understand the patterns and cycles within that industry. There are 11 sectors as defined by the GICS, the Global Industry Classification Standard, that are listed here along with some examples of ETFs within those sectors. I won't leave this up for long, so if this is of interest to you, come back to this screen and pause it to deep dive into the information. Also, I'll leave a link in the description below that will get you some more resources on these sectors. Our next type of ETF is commodity ETFs. Now, there are some unique factors in regards to commodities as they don't necessarily track with the price of equities. So if you understand stocks but are new to commodities, it would be advised that you research more to understand how prices can be influenced. A commodity ETF would give you the opportunity to diversify outside of stocks let's say in a gold-based ETF, without having to buy and store physical gold. Typically, gold and silver will not fluctuate as much as stocks will. However, they are a diversification tool that are used to stabilize a portfolio in the case of a financial downturn. Another type of ETF is bond ETFs. Typically, bond ETFs won't impress with returns, but in normal times, they are much more stable and will produce consistent returns. Now, in my opinion, this would be an option for someone who has a short-term goal where funds will need to be liquid within a not-too-distant window. A couple of bond ETFs are Vanguard's VGIT and Spider's SPHY. Now, SPHY is a high yield bond, so you'll typically get a higher return, but there is a little bit more risk that is incorporated into that. Now, these ETFs could also be compared with money market funds, which are structured a little differently. If you want more information on money market funds, you can click the card at the top for more information on that. Our most unique ETF in this list is the Bitcoin Futures ETF. While there is not a spot Bitcoin ETF that is backed by actual Bitcoin, there are ETFs ETFs that hold Bitcoin futures. And since most retirement accounts like IRAs will not allow for the direct purchase of Bitcoin, you could invest in a Bitcoin futures ETF, at least until a spot Bitcoin ETF is approved. Bitcoin is quite the unknown as far as which way the price will go. However, if you are a believer that this is a good investment, it is a good option for you even in a retirement account. My personal belief in practice 
is that an investment into a Bitcoin ETF should be a small percentage of your total strategy. At this point, there's still so much for everyone to learn about this new frontier. And while I feel it's worth a look, it may not be worth going all in. So the advice of never invest more than you're willing to lose definitely applies here. Now, a couple of Bitcoin ETFs listed here are ProShares Bitcoin Strategy and VanEx Bitcoin Strategy ETFs. Now, as you can see, since their launch in 2021 with the prices of Bitcoin going down, they are in the negative. However, the last year has reaped a return of 110% for each of those. So if you're looking to get started with buying ETFs and don't yet have a brokerage account, I have a few listed below in the description. If you're still watching, then I trust that this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe to the channel. Also hit the like button. That will help this video to reach more people uh, like you who are wanting to learn more about how to invest wisely. So for now, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.